In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct a Welch's t-test in SPSS, which is very, very easy to do because it's done automatically when you conduct an independent sample t-test. So in this example, intelligence is the d or perceived intelligence on a rating of 1 to 7 is the dependent variable and the glasses grouping, either no glass or yes, the person was wearing glasses, is the independent variable going to analyze, compare means, and independent samples t-test. You just do it exactly like you would normally. Put the grouping variable to find groups 0 and 1. Click Continue and click OK. And you'll see that SPSS just automatically produces an equal variances not assumed row of results, which you can consult if you violate the assumption of homogeneity of variance. If this were less than 0 0.05, so you could actually look at this row of data. Now, in this case, the assumption of homogeneity of variance wasn't rejected, and we got essentially the same results whether we look at the Welch's t-test, which is on the bottom row, or just the ordinary t-test. I'll point out that Welch's t-test is so useful that it doesn't assume equal sample sizes either. So you can violate the assumption of homogeneity of variance, you can have unequal sample sizes, and you can still trust this row of data that says equal variance is not assumed. It should say equal variance is not assumed and equal sample size is not assumed. Now, the regular t-test doesn't assume equal sample sizes either, but it does assume equal variances. So let me just show you a little bit of a, an example where we might actually get some different level of variance and also change the sample size a bit. Let's uh, change that to 11111. Okay, so let's look at these data and see what happens if at the, because uh, I've got a different sample size now. Now the sample size is 40 versus 32, and look how different the standard deviations are. And look at the Levine's test, it's a large F value, and the p values less than 0 0.05. And now you can see that the t values are diverging. And the correction is going such that the t value is getting smaller, and the degrees of freedom have been adjusted in a great way. Look, it started at 70, now it's down to 36.68, and the p value is also greater. So you can count on the Welch's t test to give you an accurate result when you have unequal variances, as determined by the Levine's test, and if you have unequal sample sizes. But if you have variances that are not found to be unequal, and it doesn't matter whether your sample sizes are unequal or not, you can trust the first row of results.